Hello everyone. Today I will show you three ways to set up routines and scenes in your home automation system using the Google Home with OpenHab integration action. Each method I show you will offer more flexibility but will require more work to set up. Before we start, I'm going to assume you have your OpenHab action set up and all of your controllable items linked with your Google Home. If not, please watch my how-to video for that linked in the top right corner. Okay Google. Bedtime. Okay, let's get ready for bed. Been right the first method uses only Google Home routines, which allow you to perform several actions in succession. For example, put your phone on silent, set an alarm, or adjust your lights. The setup for this routine consists of selecting the menu bar in your Google Home app, clicking on more settings, scrolling to and clicking on routines, and selecting the routine you want to configure. Here, you can turn on or off the different actions to be performed by the routine. In this example, I check the box next to the adjust lights, plugs, and more option, and hit the settings icon to select which lights I want to turn on or off as part of the routine. I'm scrolling to and setting turn off commands for my kitchen lights, leaving only one of the lights on as a nightlight. The benefit of this method is that it's very simple to set up, but you're limited to turning lights on or off. There's no ability to dim the lights or change their color. For that, we need to turn to OpenHab. Hey Google, wake up on. Okay, turning on the wake up. The second method is to only use Google to activate a scene selector switch, in this case the wake up scene, and use OpenHab rules to do the rest. As you see, I have four different switches configured for different lighting scenes, and they're made available to Google Home by applying this switchable tag in my items file. When the wake up switch is activated, either via voice command to Google or from the OpenHab user interface app, this rule will fire and will do whatever we tell it to do. For example, I'm turning the sink and recess lights on in the kitchen and a few other lights on around the house. After all actions are complete, I turn the light scene switch off since it is only a momentary switch. With this method, you can perform any number of actions and set all lights to different colors or brightness levels. You can even set up audio and climate controls. Unfortunately, if you or your family want to change something about the scene, you will be the one going back into the code over and over to fix every little thing. Trust me, it gets old. So. What if you want to make the scene configuration dynamic and store the changes without having to go back into the code? Well, this third method is for you. Hey Google, evening scene on. Okay, turning the evening scene on. Okay, let's say my wife got bored with the purple color of the kitchen cabinets and wants them to turn blue when the scene is turned on. Okay Google, make kitchen cabinets blue. Sure, changing four lights to blue. Now, I'll store that setting so the next time the scene is set, the kitchen cabinets turn blue again. Hey Google, turn on evening scene store. You got it, turning on the evening scene store. Hey Google, turn on sleep scene. Okay, turning on the sleep scene. Hey Google, evening scene on. You got it, turning the evening scene on. I can do this for any item that's controlled by this scene. I can also do this through the phone app by setting my items to their new states and turning the store button on. To make this possible, you will need to create a duplicate storage item of the same type for every item controlled by the scene rule. Here, I've created storage items for every light and LED strip controlled by the evening scene. I've prefixed them with scene underscore to make it obvious these items are part of the scene configuration. There are now two rules for the scene. The first rule acts just like the scene rule in method 2. It fires when the scene switch is enabled to control the scene items. However, we no longer set the items to hard-coded values. Instead, we use values from the storage items we just defined. The second rule is a storage rule. This one fires when we activate the store switch. It copies the current states of each light into the storage items, overriding whatever values were there before. This is how we're able to dynamically change settings for each scene. As you see, there is a lot more work up front for this method, but the ability to change scene settings dynamically will make up for it, as you will not have to keep going back into your rules file to adjust settings for each light. Keep in mind, to make these settings stick through power cycles, you do need to use a persistence add-on. 
but that is a topic for another video. To help you get started with these methods, I will post the topic with my items and rules code on the OpenHab forum at community.openhab.org and add a link to the video description. While there, check out the forum and sign up if you're not already a member. It is a great community of very smart people who will help you answer any question you may have about OpenHab and quickly. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel for more home automation videos. I post new videos weekly and you can check out some of them here. Until next time.